Now back to the AEW Eliminator Tournament because I went off course there. So AEW just had the Japanese side of the Eliminator Tournament which emanated from the Ice Ribbon Dojo in Japan. And it was four matches. We're going to cover them here. So on this show we had the first match, Yuka Sakazaki versus Mei Saruga. Yuka Sakazaki. I, 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 oh my god. She has the best theme song in all of pro wrestling right now. Actually, that's a lie. She has one of the best, not the best. But whenever I hear a theme song, I get pretty hyped. Mei Saruga, I know she's a student of Emmy and she's from Gato Move. I my friend Dane loves Chaco Pro and Gato Move. I I don't really watch it. Not gonna lie to you guys. Not that I don't like it. I just don't watch it because I, I it doesn't interest me that much. But I I was pretty interested to see what she was going to do because I have never seen her wrestle up until this point. I thought the match was pretty entertaining. A lot of like ha ha he he kind of comedy in this match. You know, they were kind of do spots where like it, it, it's a I feel like this is one of those matches. And I said this much because I was watching this with my friends. I was watching this like in a call with like all my friends who were watching this show. And I said as much during that. I said I wouldn't have started this show off with this match because it's like. If this is, and I firmly believe many, many people who watch this show probably didn't know who, like, more than half of the women were. Like, you know, I knew who Yuka was. I knew who Emmy was. I knew who Mei was. I knew who Maki was. I knew who Aja Kong was. Couldn't tell you anything about Rin. Couldn't tell you anything about Ryo. I mean, Okada. I couldn't tell you anything about Venny. Like, I, only half the women I knew. But it's like everyone else, new to me. So I know for most people watching this, they were mostly new to almost everybody on this damn show. So you want to kind of showcase your best cards first. Like, you know, start off the match high, like set the tone. And then you want to bring it down with that little comedy stuff. Cool. But I feel like starting golf with it may have sent the wrong message to some people. Now, I did not watch this show live when it happened because I was at work. I did catch the playback. I didn't even look at the live chat for it. So I didn't know what the reception was for this match. But I figured, I feel like... For people who may be uh, expecting the hard-hitting nature of starter matches or whatnot, or just Joshi matches or women's ma wrestling in general, if they were looking for that here, yeah, you got it, like, towards the end of the match, but, like, the beginning of it was a lot of comedy, and I feel like it probably, like, some people would have got turned off by that. I didn't get turned off by it, but I could easily see how some people would get turned off by this match. Like, if I showed this to a non-wrestling fan, they probably would have just walked away, like, bro, you watch this? You, you watched it? This is what you enjoy? But, you know... To each their own, like I said. I, I thought it was a fun match. Uh, Yuka Sakazaki did end up winning the match with a springboard 450 onto May. She does one of the best springboard 450s there is. And she got the pin. She advanced to the quarterfinal round. I, okay, so I don't think it was ever in doubt that Yuka would win. I wanted May to win. Like, I wanted her to win only because she's a new face and I don't know who she is. I know who she is, but I didn't see a wrestler before. And, you know, I feel like she probably could be some, like, if, if they were able to go to America, and if they wanted to, like, you know, push somebody in a crowd, I feel like May would get over. I get the sense that her bubbly personality, she has the cutest smile, by the way, her bubbly personality, or, like, just everything about her sends me vibes of, like, early stage Bailey. I get early stage Bailey from May Saruga. So... I'm like, all right, if they wanted to give her the win here over Yuka, who's a, who, I don't want to say this established name in AEW, but who was a name in AEW, you know, that'd be a good win for her. But Yuka won, and, you know, I'm not mad at it because, once again, Yuka was an AEW before. People know the name, and Yuka's great. Like, Yuka is a great wrestler. So, I'm happy with the result. I would have preferred May, but yeah, I'm happy with the result. So, then we get into the next match, Venny versus Emi Sakura. Uh, first thing I noticed in here, which I didn't really notice until after the fact, but, uh, Venny came out, and she was wearing this kimono, and when I saw this picture on Twitter, I almost, uh, it tugged my heart to drinks. It was a similar kimono, I don't know if it was the exact same kimono, but it was a similar, um, robe to the one that Hana Kimura would wear when she was in a wet tie in Stardom. So I thought that was really, a really nice homage from Venny. Uh, Venny in this match, okay, before I mention this, um, I didn't know this until, like, someone mentioned, I think AEW mentioned it on their, uh, on their Bracketology, uh, Tony Schiavone mentioned it, but Venny is, uh, transgender, um, she, I believe, may have been born a male and then, you know, had the surgery done and now she's a female, which, you know, all power to her, I have absolutely no issues with that, I represent the LGBT community all day, every day, 
But honestly, like, if you had looked at Venny and no one would have told you she was, she had work done, I would have never known. Like, I'll be honest, I would have never known if Tony Schiavone did not say anything. And, uh, okay, people have different opinions on, on this kind of things, and I'll throw my own two cents out there. You guys could comment on if you agree or not. Kind of curious about where it is. Just don't get too, you know, political in the chat. Um... With Vetti being uh, trans, because you know Nyla Rose, she's transgender as well. She was born a male. She made the transition over to being a female. Like I said, nothing wrong with that. My, uh, nothing wrong with that, in my opinion, at all. But I feel like it. I don't. I like. I didn't need to know she was transgender. Like that's how I feel about the situation. It's like I don't feel like she needed to hide it, or AW really needed to hide it. But like, if they never mentioned it, and I found out. I'd have been like, I wouldn't have feel like I was lied to or anything. I guess maybe it was just that, that level of transparency they wanted to keep, and that's why they mentioned it. But I, I was just looking at her, and I'm like, I don't feel like I would have had anything taken away or added by knowing she was trans. Like, I feel the same way with Nyla Rose when I first saw her. Like, I felt the same way when I found out Nyla was a transgender. It was like, I feel like I didn't need to know that. <laughs> like I would have I would have supported her and liked her the same way if I didn't know that as opposed to me knowing that now. I mean not opposed cuz that means I don't like it, but no, obviously I don't I I I care and I you know appreciate it and I like it, but I feel like sometimes it it would have just been it would have been okay if I didn't know that. And it, it sounds so ignorant coming out of my mouth and I completely don't mean it for it to be sound ignorant at all. I just feel like sometimes it can be pushed as they're trying to make an agenda out of it. Or, oh, this is the this is the uh, first transgender. Because that's what they were trying to make it seem like when Nyla Rose got signed. Is that, oh, this is the first transgender wrestler in AEW. The first mainstream transgender wrestler. And it's like, yeah, that's cool and all. But it's not the agenda I think we should be pushing. It's not the, the vibe we should be going for, at least. You know, let Nyla Rose thrive because she's Nyla Rose. Not because Nyla Rose used to be a man. Like, I, that's, that's the kind of shit I'm talking about. But let me get off that topic because, once again, I'm not trying to get too political here. Uh, Venny versus Emi Sakura. I thought this was uh, the best match on the show. Uh, I, th- I think it went, like, maybe slightly too long. Slightly too long. But I enjoyed it overall. Emi, Emi Sakura is great at everything she does. I, I said this in my uh, chat as well when I was talking to my uh, guy friends watching the show. That Emi, people don't like to admit this, but Emi Sakura was in my opinion one of the best parts about AEW in the very like the very early stage of Dynamite like when Dynamite first started and Riho was the champion and Emmy and Riho were feuding Emmy Sakura was out there putting on some of the best performances of the night with Jamie Hayter and um uh, Chris Statlander and Shanna and Rhea like she was putting on like some of the best performances but I I don't know if it was their gimmick I don't know if it was because they didn't cuz it's like back then AEW actually featured their women a lot better. Like, it's not like... I'm not going to pretend like AEW were, like, you know, main eventing their shows, women's matches or anything. But, like, their women's division was a little bit better treated than it is today, back in 2019. But Emmy was, like, gimmick-wise, wrestling-wise, in-ring. Like, she was she was really good, and I enjoyed that. But I guess it was all the other things going on about AEW that it just kind of made me, like, you know, whatever. But now looking back on it, I'm like, yeah, damn. I mean, if Emmy would have beat Riho at, Rebe- at um, not Revolution, um, what's it called? A full gear in 2019, I wouldn't have been too disappointed in that. I mean, I feel like they probably didn't because, obviously, Emmy runs Choco Pro and fucking uh, Stardom and founded Ice Like, she's busy in Japan, so she's not going to be the AEW Women's Champion. I mean... You can make an argument that Riho as women's champion wasn't too effective because she wasn't in AEW for, like, months at a time at one point. Like, she literally beat Emmy, and then she disappeared, and then we didn't see her again for, like, months, and then she lost the title to Nyla Rose, and then that was kind of it. The, the women's division is just a whole whole mess right now, but, well, yeah, yeah. This tournament is supposed to turn it around. It's supposed to, at least. Venny incorporated a lot of her... High flying aspects in with some kicks, and that was pretty nice. She was hitting some moon salts, some jumping shooting star presses. I, I kind of uh, laughed that when I saw the jumping shooting star press, I'm like, she's she's uh, fucking, she's mocking, uh, she's ripping off of Sayaka Matani. Like, cause I was, uh, 
Ugh, I can't speak. But we're only doing one take because I gotta go to work soon. Whenever I see Sayaka Matani doing her high-flying moves, I like to always pretend she's the most innovative person in the entire universe. Like, nobody out there is doing moves like Sayaka Matani. And when Venny's out here doing it, I'm like, fucking Venny's ripping off of Saya. Isn't this sad to see? I mean, I don't know who started wrestling first. I'm going to say it was Venny wrestling first. But Sayaka Matani's out here killing the game once again. Um, You would think... That with Venny having all these moves in here and you know everything that was building up to, that she would get the win. But it was Emi Sakura getting the win with her Tiger Driver. She make it set on to the next round. And Emi Sakura, being a former AEW talent, and I keep on saying former as if like we have she's not signed anymore. But like no, Emi Emi and Yuka very much do still work with AEW. We just haven't seen them in such a long time because of COVID. And if we never got this tournament, we guarantee would still not have seen them. But it's like, Emmy had her time, and Yuka had her time. I would have preferred to see, because it's not like, it's not like we couldn't have had them go to the next round and have them continue on, unless contractually they couldn't. I don't know what the ramifications that would be exactly, but I would prefer if anyone this match, Emmy did win, like I said, not disappointed, but I'm like, all right. Would prefer Venny, but let's see what happens in the next match. So the next match we have, we have Maki Ido, King of Simps, Queen of Simps, I should say, the deity of shit, as she calls herself, versus Kazuchiko, Kata, and Dre. Oh, no, let me not say that. Uh, Ryu Mizunami. Uh, Ryu Mizunami is a dead ringer for Okada. Dead ringer for Okada. I mean, this woman, from the jacket to the hair, she even had the fucking Times New Roman, not the Times New Roman, what is it called? Like that, um, it might be times, remember. but like she even had that, like that font that Okada has on his gear on her gear. Like she was dead ass Okada in the flesh. She was just slightly bigger in frame. And that was it. I mean, and moveset too. But she, she reminds me of like, if Okada became like, uh, his gimmick was that she was a Gen Z millennial. That would be Okada. He would be Ryo Mizunami. Cause she came out with the glasses, you know, kind of doing some. See, she she had a lot of charisma. I think Maki Ito beat her in that department of like who was the most charismatic. But they both exuded a lot of charisma. They both had a lot of personality to show. And, and this was a very fun match as well. Um, I enjoyed it for the most part. I think that uh, Maki Ito definitely has a big future. She was the most over in this tournament. Now, you can't really say the most over when there's no audience. But like on Twitter, on social media, everybody was talking about how excited they were to see Maki Ito. I was talking about it. Your favorite YouTuber was talking about it. Your favorite Twitter handle was talking about it. Everybody loves them some Maki Ito. So, one would expect AEW would put over the person who is the most over, Maki Ito. Except they didn't. Ryu Mizunami gets Ryo, gets Maki down with her... Why don't you? This is a really cool submission. It's like, you guys know that submission Edge does where he kind of clutches your neck and your arm together? It's a whole MMA submission and I love it. But Edge does it. Well, Rio does this, but she gets you on the mat and she rolls around with you. And it kind of like takes you out of it with your stamina because you're using up a lot of it. She's rolling you on your face and whatnot. It's really cool. I, I like the finish a lot. But Maki taps on. I'm like, huh? <laughs> huh? Like Rio gets the pin and it's like, I don't dislike Rio. I don't dislike her, but I'm like, Maki's the one who people want to see win. It's like she gets knocked out around one. Really? It's like, okay, so Maki loses, fucking Venny loses, and May loses. Like, all these women, and Rin, we've seen in AW before, she was at Double or Nothing 2019. I'm like, okay. All right. I, this definitely disappointed me a lot. I'm not mad, but it disappointed me, because I really want to see Maki move on. Let's get on to main event. Rin Karukura versus Aja Kong. Now, I knew nothing about Rin Karukura, because I don't watch Wave. A pro wrestling wave she's the champion over there um from what i heard she's really good but like i said no matches no entrances no highlights nothing i knew i've seen nothing of her work aja kong she's obviously a legend in not just women's wrestling and japanese women's wrestling but just wrestling in general all the battles she's had with aja, i mean herself all the battles she's had with bolokano and manami toyota and he akira hokuto she's had battles with just about everybody under the sun uh, they had her in AEW for a hot minute at Double or Nothing, and then at Fighter Fest when they teased the match with her, an awesome call, but then that went nowhere, and she's been basically off AEW television ever since. 
Well, she never was on AW Talbots, but you get the point. And then we have Rin Kadokura. So, with Aja Kong, she's like 50 years old or something like that. She's, she's very up there. She is not young anymore. So, in this match, I didn't expect her to go like 80 miles per hour like she used to for her size. But she was... She was kind of slow. She, she was kind of slow. Like, she wasn't... She wasn't immobile, but she definitely was not like, she yeah, wasn't fast. Like, Rin Kadokura was the young girl. You know, she was the underdog baby face, which we all expected because it's Aja Kong. Whenever you're in there with a monster like Aja Kong or Awesome Kong, you're going to be the underdog baby face no matter what, unless you're another big girl. So Rin was in there doing her stuff, and Aja Kong, she's doing like lariats and kicks and shit. And it's like, you have respect for these people because they've been in the business for so long, they've been doing these great matches. But then I'm sitting here like, this match. Not gonna lie, it's kind of carried by Rainier. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to be rude, but you know, it's not a great match for me right now. Um, like, it wasn't. Was it the worst match on the show? It it was the worst match on the show, but it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad, but it was the worst match on the show. And it's not an understatement at all. I mean, not an overstatement at all. Um, Rin Katakura, I thought she was really good for what she could do. I feel like if she was entering with somebody else. I probably could have seen a lot more of what you can do. Because when you're an underdog baby face and it's a monster, you're kind of limited. Because you're selling a lot. You only can do but so many moves that's going to knock your opponent down. You don't really have too much to go off of. You're following a certain formula. So it's like, I feel like I've only got a piece of what Rin could actually do in the ring. Had you put her in there with somebody like Emmy, she probably would have showed out. But we get to the end and I'm sitting here waiting like, okay... Aja Kong is obviously, because when you're in a tournament of any kind, you always are going to expect the upset win. Somebody's going to get the upset win. And so far, we haven't gotten that in this entire tournament. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, Rin will be the upset win. Rin's going to get a crucifix roll up over Aja Kong or something, and she's going to make it onto the next round, and she'll be that, that baby face comeback people are waiting for. Well, she goes for crucifix. Aja Katsuzer hits a fall, uh, like a Samoa drop, and I'm like, oh boy. So, then she's coming back, trying to come back. Uh, basically, she stops her from hitting a suplex. Aja Kong hits her with a lariat, goes to the top rope, and hits her with the elbow drop from the top, and gets the pin over her in. Aja Kong make it onto next round. So, I just kind of, like, I'm like, I, I didn't, I liked the show. But I felt like I walked away thinking, literally everybody who probably should have made it on lost <laughs> like everybody who made it on were people who were on aw before aja kong was on double or nothing 2019 rio muzunami was on double or nothing 2019 we've seen emi sakura on D dynamite before we've seen yuka on dynamite before so it's literally all aew women like put it that way it's literally all aew women i'm just sitting here like we could have made some new star and i i can't i i, I don't want to say new stars because it's like i don't know if we would have ever seen these women again so that's why i like i can't be mad because it's like i don't know if i would have ever saw may again i don't know if i'm going to see Vinny again i don't know if i'm going to see rin again i don't know if i'm going to see maki ito again but the fact of the matter is it's a tournament and it's like you they can still make it on to the semi-final round even if they're not going to make it to the finals and go all the way to america to face whoever who's going to win the american side we still could have gotten somebody else going to the final. I was honestly rooting for Maki to go to the finals, but she's gone. So I'm like, okay, well, if it's not Maki, then May. Maybe. May's gone. All right, well, maybe maybe fucking Vanny. She's new. Vanny's gone. Maybe Ren. Ren's gone. I ain't gonna lie. I'm a, I'm a little, uh, I'm a little, I'm a little slight about this tournament. Like, we have Yuka and Emmy, which is gonna be good, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be Yuka winning that match. Because Emmy's not going on. And then we have Rio and Aja, which I really don't care to see Rio versus Aja. Like, Rio was good, but I wanted to see Maki. And Aja is a great, but I wanted to see Rin. So I was like, ah. Ah. Like, it was, it was, it was good, but kind of sour taste in my mouth coming out of it. But that's just kind of a nitpick of mine. 